This video is going to be about 2D sketching. And ironically enough, 2D sketching it is the most fundamental part of 3D modeling. Because it is upon 2D sketches that we build and use all of the 3D modeling tools that are available here. And it's a huge topic, so we won't be able to cover everything you can do in uh, 2D sketching in this video. But the hope is to get a nice introduction to the area uh, for people new to Fusion 360 and also create a resource that you can go back to whenever you feel like practicing the basics of uh, 2D sketching. As always, you will be able to see the commands that I'm using right here to the left. So if I press Command R, you'll see Command R down here. And uh, for Windows users, uh, which I imagine most of you are, this little squiggly line here, which is the command button on Mac, is uh, the same as the control key. So if you see Command R, you just press Control R instead. And now, with that, we can continue and create our first 2D sketch. The first thing you do is to make sure that you're in the design mode, and then that you have selected solid right here. And from there, you go ahead and uh, select create sketch. And what happens here is that uh, Fusion 360 immediately prompts us to select which plane we want to sketch upon. Right now, that's a quite easy choice, because the only planes available to us are the origin planes. So let's just go ahead and select the XZ plane here. As we look on the toolbar here, we see that we have many different ways to start creating our sketch. We have the line tool, we have rectangles, we have circles, splines, and many more things. And then if we press the create button, we get access to even more things. Uh, for now though, let's keep things very simple and just select the line tool. And now we're inside the line tool. And you will notice that whenever you stop moving uh, your mouse like this, you will get small little tips for what to do next by Fusion 360. So now it says place first point next to the mouse there. And uh, that's exactly what we're gonna do. So uh, we're just gonna click somewhere on the screen, which locks down our starting point of the line. And then we're just gonna place it, place the end point right there. And uh, if we are happy with the line right now, we can just click the sketch mark, which will exit the line creation tool, or we can keep on clicking to place additional lines that are directly connected to uh, the line segment. And uh, it doesn't matter how this looks for you, I'm just putting some things down to show. And But when you feel happy with what you have, you just click the sketch mark right here, and you have uh, exited the line tool. Another way to exit the line tool is by clicking escape. So if I clicked right here to start the line tool, but then realized that I actually don't want to place a line at all, I'm just gonna press escape, like this, which takes me out of the line tool. The next thing we're gonna do is to create one more line, and we're gonna do that by selecting the line tool here. Then we're gonna move down and select the starting point of this line, as the end point of the previous line there. And then we're gonna move up and select the end point of this line as the starting point of the first line. And as we do that, we see that something has now changed here. Instead of being white, we now have this orange uh, hue inside. And what that means is that we now have a profile. So if I exit by pressing the escape key, I see that I can now uh, highlight and mark this uh, profile plane right here. And a uh, small note, if you don't see this, uh, just double check that you have this option marked show profile because without that, uh, you won't be seeing the orange hue. The reason for why profiles are important is because they are what we use whenever we want to turn a 2D sketch into a 3D body, which we're gonna go through in the next lesson. For now though, as we are talking about colors, let's just focus a little bit on the color of these lines. We see that they are blue. All right, as we go through this course, we're gonna see the lines being in many different colors. But for now, let's just talk about what blue means. Uh, blue means that everything is okay. This is a good line, <laughs> it's not broken, but it is undefined. And what undefined means is that you can basically take any of these points and you can move it around however you want, and there is no real restraint on this line. 
uh, if a line was to be fully defined, then it would instead be black. So let's talk about how to turn these lines into fully defined lines. Now to do that, let's just start off by cleaning the sketch plane that we have. Uh, we can do that by moving our mouse and dragging a large rectangle over all of the lines, releasing, clicking down the right mouse button and then selecting delete right here. Now we're back again to a completely clean sketch plane. To investigate the difference between constrained and unconstrained geometry, we're going to go ahead and create a rectangle. So let's move up to the rectangle tool here. We're going to click it once and then we're going to select our starting point. So I'm going to select right here. And then we're going to move our mouse and select the end point, which I'm randomly going to put right there. And as expected, we see that all of the lines are blue because this rectangle, it does not have any dimensions and it can move however it wants in uh, the 2D sketch. So let's exit the rectangle tool by pressing escape. And then we can see that it's uh, undefined. By the way, we can just grab uh, the points and move it around like that. Uh, now, uh, to make it defined, let's just think about what we need. Well, first off, the size of the rectangle needs to be defined. And uh, this is where the dimension tool comes in. And that is a tool that you're going to be using a lot in Fusion 360. So uh, the first few times we are going to be using it, I'm going to select it right here in the toolbar, sketch dimension. But then in the future, I'm just going to use the hotkey, which is uh, D, which also brings up the tool. So we select the tool and then we're going to select the sides here to put down our dimensions. Uh, by default, the dimensions are in millimeters, but if you would like to change this, you can go to document settings, open up by clicking the arrow here, select units, and then select this little uh, icon to the right to modify the units. And uh, we have all of the standard types. We have millimeters, centimeters, meters, inches, and foots. So we're going to select uh, millimeter for now because uh, I'm European. So that's what I'm going to use. Uh, press cancel here and then continue with our rectangle. So we now have this base side with the 67.1 dimension in millimeters. And uh, it's a bit of an awkward number. So we're going to go ahead and change it by double clicking the number and then typing in something more neat, like uh, 50 millimeters, for example, like that. And then we press enter to confirm. And um, that's that. So now let's go ahead and select the height of the uh, rectangle. And we're going to do that by again, moving to the sketch dimension tool, selecting the line that we want to dimension, and then clicking down upon which we can type in the number that we want. And let's make this one uh, 100 millimeters. Okay, cool. Uh, and now there's a question, right? Because we have the base defined, we have the height defined, but why is it still blue? Shouldn't it be black now that we have constrained the dimensions fully? But uh, we will see that it's actually not fully constrained yet because we can still move it around. If I press exit and uh, go out of the dimension tool, we see that if I grab a corner, I can still freely move it around however I want right here. To stop that, we basically need to fix it to a single point here. So what we can do is to create a constraint. And the way we do that is by moving first to the constraint panel right here, selecting coincident, which basically uh, connects two points together. And then the first point we're going to select is the corner of the rectangle, and then we're going to connect it to the origin right here. And bam, now all of the lines are in black, which means that the rectangle is fully defined and we can't really jerk it around anymore by grabbing the edges and uh, dragging. If you want to pan the 2D sketch plane, simply click and hold the scroll wheel like this to move around, uh, just like in 3D space. And just now we did something new, right? Because we went to the constraints panel and we selected uh, the coincident constraint here. And constraints, it's really what uh, holds uh, these uh, sketches together. And you might see that uh, some of the constraints are put in place automatically uh, by Fusion, like these ones here. And at first it might look a bit daunting with all of these symbols and um, yeah, things appearing without you really having placed them there. But it is not that complicated. To show you that, I'm just going to go through the six most common constraints that you will encounter and show you how to use those in sketches. 
so let's move ahead. Now, most of these constraints do exactly what it sounds like. So if we look at the names, uh, most of them will be self-explanatory. Uh, but despite that, uh, let's just go through them really quickly uh, to see how uh, they can be used to define your sketches. So first off, let's create a line. Click in the line tool, selecting the starting point, the end point, and then clicking the check mark for finishing the line. Um, if we look at the horizontal vertical tool, as you might expect, when we select that and then select the line, the line is going to become horizontal. Uh, then if we go back by clicking Ctrl Z a couple of times, we can uh, drag the line to be more vertical than horizontal. And then we can use that same tool to instead uh, define it as vertical. So basically it will just snap to the closest thing, either vertical or horizontal. Uh, moving on to the coincident uh, tool that we already used. Uh, this tool is used to snap two points together. So we can select that tool, we select the point right here, and then we can snap it to the origin for example. And as you expect, the line will move down here. Now moving on to the tangent tool right here. Uh, the tangent tool, it's great for defining things that are bendy, so circles, arcs, um, splines, things like that. So if we go and create a circle by pressing the tool here, we are going to select the center point. We're going to move it, uh, move the mouse a little bit and then click again to define the circle. Uh, now if we go and select the tangent tool, we can make the circle align perfectly with this line by first clicking the circle and then the line. Moving on to the equal tool. The equal tool, as you might expect, makes things equally sized. So if we put down one more circle here, make it a little bit smaller, and then we press the sketch dimension tool and we actually define the circle as being, let's say, um, 10 millimeters big, like that. Then we can make this other circle the same size without defining the same dimension twice. We simply select the equal tool, we click on the first circle here, and then we click on the second one. And now they are the same size. Simple enough. Uh, the parallel tool, it's uh, quite self-explanatory. If we put down one more line here, uh, like that, we can make it parallel to uh, anything by clicking the parallel constraint tool, and then the line and then what we want to make it parallel to which in this case as you might guess is the only other line we have right here cool now moving on to the perpendicularity tool if we select that one we can make two things uh, perpendicular to each other and uh, if we try now to make this line perpendicular to this one we will get an error so let's try that we see that there is an error and the uh, that is because we already have a constraint here that is conflicting with the one that we're trying to put down. So we have the parallel constraint right here, which is visible as this little uh, two-line symbol. Uh, so to put down a uh, perpendicularity constraint, we first need to remove the parallel constraint. And the way we do that is by first exiting the constraint tool by pressing escape a couple of times, like that. Then we highlight and select this uh, constraint we click it once with the left button, and then we click the right button to select delete. Now we see that the constraint is gone here, it's gone on the other line as well, and now we are free to again try with the perpendicularity constraint by clicking it, clicking the first line, and then clicking the second line. And now these two lines are perfectly uh, 90 degrees to each other. And these are really some of the main constraints that you're going to come across. Um, the only thing that makes this a little bit more complicated is that sometimes these constraints, they come up without you really having asked them to. So if we select the line tool here and we start drawing a line, we see that it's trying to snap. So if we make it about 90 degrees to the other line, it's going to try to put down a perpendicularity constraint as shown by that little a rectangle between the two lines. If we move this line up a little bit, uh, it's gonna try to make it horizontal. And uh, I would advise to be careful with these uh, auto constraints, because if you end up using them too much, you can end up with constraints that you really don't want. 
So uh, the way I do it is actually to usually look for a position where I can click where nothing is uh, snapping. So if I want a perpendicularity constraint, I'd rather click right here, then finish the sketch, and then select the constraint manually and apply it between the two lines. While this might seem like a longer way to go about it, my experience has shown that when you uh, use too much uh, auto constraining, then uh, you will end up with sketches that behave in weird ways that you really don't want them to. So my advice would be to use manual definitions of constraints uh, to a pretty large extent, especially when the sketches become more complicated. Now let's just have a little review of what we have learned so far. So like I say, uh, this is not a complete overview of sketching and we will learn much much more as we go through and create different household items. But for now, let's just uh, summarize that in this section right here, we have the tools that we use to put down our lines. And these lines, they can be either defined, so black, or they can be undefined, so that means they are blue. And uh, to make them defined, which means that they can be modified haphazardly, we use the sketch dimension tool, as well as the constraints available in the constraints panel. In the next lesson, we're gonna be looking at what different tools actually exist to take our 2D sketches into 3D. And this is where things get really exciting because now we're actually gonna be working with 3D bodies that can be 3D printed if we wanted to. So I'm really excited about the next lesson and uh, I'll see you then.